Good afternoon, everyone. As even more volcanoes rumble to life this week, you just have to wonder when that ash is going to start to have an effect. On our atmospheric temperatures, University of Alabama, Huntsville, showing that we're right back at the 30-year average again. Fresh snow covering Hawaii Island summits mid-April. Early season snow, two months to be early Antarctic blast, Sunhua River in China, not normally freezing until November, terrifying headline, eh, hold your horses on that one, it's just about ice breaking up and getting stuck at the dam, lower river flowing, upper river still ice covered, but melting snows in Danxia, northwest China, should leave you with a little bit of wow. New studies show that by the time people reach their middle ages, the body often produces less than half of the collagen it did in their youth. Collagen is the main building block in our skin, making up 70 to 80 percent of it. This is why we get sagging skin and wrinkles as we age. If you want to look younger, you must supplement collagen, which will improve your skin's elasticity, make it smoother, more plump, and more youthful looking. That's why Ageless Multi-Collagen provides five key types of collagen you need from four different sources, essential to optimally support an array of full body benefits. No odor, no taste, no clumping, unlike other collagen supplements. And this is why I recommend Health with Adapt 2030. Ageless Multi-Collagen, and look at that, I need another bag already. Quick way for youthful appearance, Use the link in the description box below for 51% off my favorite Ageless Multicalogen. And now on with the video. And as every grand solar minimum begins to intensify in earnest as the gas giants line up into their formation in the outer solar system in one quadrant, we seem to get a lot of volcanic activity on the Earth. And you'll see this from the late antique little ice age through the sporer minimum, the maunder minimum, and then now, an enormous amount of volcanoes are coming to life as well as crustal anomalies, sand volcanoes, mud volcanoes, earth slips, earth cracks. October 2024 is when the tightest magnetic alignment of the gas giants will occur. So between now and then, there's going to be a lot more of volcanic ash in the atmosphere. And you wonder how much this really has in terms of a cooling effect overall and how long of a term it will be. Because we see significant spikes and drop-offs all the way through the last 5,000 years. We're far on the right chart. Red is where we're poised to go entering into this grand solar minimum. Now for most of us, those bottom drops ushering us into the next ice age will be far outside of our own human lifespans. But... You can see it's forecast cooling. And it's just really interesting that University of Alabama Huntsville showing global temperatures back below the 30-year average. Now, interestingly, the 30-year average, which used to be from 1981 to 2010, has been updated into these last 30 years from 1991 to 2020. So has the hurricane designations for the 30-year averages on hurricanes, they updated as well. And you have to ask yourself, it's pretty interesting that both data sets have been updated for the 30-year averages, hurricanes and global temperatures, this year alone. But I left a link below for Dr. Roy Spencer's site, so you can go ahead and check out the data in tabular form instead of just this graph form here. Now, indeed, if we're starting to seeing a little bit of volcanic ash affecting precipitation patterns, as well as the amount of available sunlight coming to the planet. We might get a little bit mix up in the seasons. Here we go. Fresh snow covering Hawaii Island. And we are talking about the island of Hawaii, not the full chain. Mauna Loa, Mauna Kea, USGS, Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, taking these images off of Mauna Loa. And chalk up a few more inches. It's been, what, the fifth time this year that it's snowed up there. 
An incredibly low in altitude snows on Maui last year and this as well shows a trend of something shifting, but we're talking multi-decade shifts here, if not multi-century. Now down to Australia, early season snow blast, Antarctic blast is what they term it, and it's two months early. So the onset of winter two months early, at least in part in Australia happening, who would have thought? Cradle Mountain Hotel. And as I looked at the images about this story, I thought, well, how much snow is that really? A couple inches here and there. Okay. At least what the mainstream media in Australia was putting out. But then I came across these images here. Threadbow, Tasmania. First taste of snow for 2021. Now you need to ask yourself, being two months early and that's the first taste of snow in a ski resort area, do you think that's a little unusual? A little out of season because Mount Buller also racking up about nine inches two months early. Even the Guardian in the UK picking it up. Polar blast. Well, that's southern polar blast. Sends chill from Queensland down to Tasmania. See, they reversed it like this. If you know anything about the topography of Australia... Queensland's much warmer than Tasmania, but if the way they worded it in that first paragraph, all the way down to Tasmania, they leave you with that presumption that, oh, it's a cool area anywhere. It's much cooler in Tasmania than Queensland. Now reverse that and put that in the headline and see how it works. Let's do it. Polar blast sends chill from Tasmania up to Queensland. That'll grab your attention way more than from Queensland to Tasmania. The flip in the word really does have an effect on you how you perceive the cold or the heat in an area. Over to New South Wales Bureau of Meteorology. Anywhere you see zero, that's freezing or below freezing where water turns to ice. This is not in Tasmania. This is really far into sort of subtropical region. These are depths of winter temperatures. Middle of July, middle of August in the Southern Hemisphere. Remember, in the Northern Hemisphere, it'd be like the middle of December, middle of January for us. Down in Australia, two months early at the minimum and so far out of season cold. And the storms were intense as well. Look at the boulders thrown up on the road from the waves. Port Ferry. And with all the anomalies happening, I saw this article here about the Songhua River. And it's spectacular. It's an incredible rare event, terrifying snow tsunami. And I said, what? Songhua River? Okay, I understand it freezes after November. Usually in December, it'll start to lock up in earnest. But then the headline reads, but this time it freezes in April. So I knew where to go to look for a little bit of information like this. CGTN, that's a good one. Xinhua News, there's a few others that you can jump over in China in the English language spectrum and then dig down into some of this stuff. So this is like a hold your horses. It's not nearly that kind of wildness on that. It's a misleading headline in that video. It can be easily explained by a dam and a water retention in the middle of the river. Right under that bridge, the water upstream is still covered with ice, but the downstream river is flowing. That's why you're getting that diametric opposite of fully ice-free water and fully ice-covered water. They're different sections of the river. They do that on purpose for irrigation control. And you can see the gates in front blocking up the ice. When it's let down, that ice is starting to move. But a close in on where the video came out of a rare ice tsunami. Yeah, it's blocked up ice off a melting river. That's not a rare event at all. Misleading at best. But digging into that headline, I... Came across the Danxia, melting snows up in northwest China. So incredibly beautiful here. Desert area. I want to zoom that out because this is nature at its best. And you have to look at that and intertwine it with the electric geology. The stratification and the ionized wind, particle density, particle charge, discharge pattern. And if you have Google Earth, you definitely want to look into Danxia area in China. And if you've never heard of electric geology, this would be a great place to start. 
Shout out to Andy Hall and the Thunderbolts Project explaining how planetary discharge can create these formations. In these strange times of upset weather, downset weather, whatever kind of inclement weather, out of season weather, it's going to affect the ability for us to grow our food. So you may want to consider long-term storable foods. My Patriot Supply and Adapt 2030. That link's in the description box below. It's a great way to support the channel so I can bring you more research just like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.